God damn it. All right. It's that time. It's Sunday. It's that time. Uh, it's Fall Trey at the Chicken Nugget Buffet. This is our weekly live YouTube broadcast where we recap some of the best moments from an entire week of episodes from the podcast Adventures in Design. We pull out specific timestamps so that you can go back, get some of the best stuff right away, and move on with your life today. Our very first return, nope, our second, sorry I lied, but you're still special. Uh, <laughs> we have Britta coming back once again of Outlet Epoch. Britta, how are you doing today? Doing fantastic. I'm really excited to talk about this week's episodes because they are really good. Lots of chicken nuggets. For sure. It was difficult to pick out one of all these. And uh, of course, we have Tony Mendez from Outside Sources. Tony, how are you? Excellent, sir. Good to be back as always. Awesome. Um, at the end of this episode, we'll have a playlist linking all the different Adventures in Design episodes that are live on YouTube, so you can just go right into that. We'll also do some of our older episodes, and you can subscribe. But again, this just happens every Sunday in the morning. It's not a big deal. You know how to do this thing. Uh, this week, uh, we're going over four episodes. So we had start out with Shop Talk with Sean Mort. That's for Circle of Trust members only. That was followed up by Paul Frank, which was followed up by some Redneck Wisdom with Gerald Tidwell. And we closed out the week with The Logo Show uh, with Dan Styles and Billy Baum. It was an awesome week. Brenda is very much smart about how awesome this week is. Uh, and I will let you start. Uh, so the first one is a shop talk with Sean Mort. Uh, Mark and Sean just catching up, getting getting in with life, making things happen. Uh, what did you What did you pull out for this episode, Britta? Um, right at the one hour and eight minute mark, Sean talks about how they're heavy and uh, another mouth to feed and um, money and time is kind of like an issue and it's harder and harder for them to come by now 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 these days now that they have a kid and um, for instance he kind of states how uh, travel is so important for him right now and I thought that that was kind of interesting because um, like the local type of types of services that people offer are always like different so um, it's kind of good to kind of expand and reach out to surrounding areas so you can hopefully find more business. And I thought that when they were talking about that and just kind of the reality of uh, the, the things that you have to give up, uh, like travel and seeing your family, it was kind of interesting. Yeah. Well, I don't think Sean likes Hendry that much, so that's kind of why he leaves. But uh <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the Snicket is not jam-packed with business by any means. So Sean is no stranger to the inside of an airline to go out and get that money. Yeah, I, I, uh, you kind of forget. And, like, you know, I live 30 minutes away from Los Angeles. But I'll tell you one thing. It's not fucking Los Angeles where I live. And if I were to do any of the shows they do, it wouldn't be as quite of a long travel. But even when you live close to these big areas, you got to get in it. you got to really get inside of it because that's where everybody is. And you can sell five posters to your friends by your house, but if you want to be a professional about it, you're going to have to get into the major metropolitan areas. Uh, Tony, what about you? What did you find in this episode? Uh, mine is at the one hour, 58 minute, and 28 second mark. Uh, essentially, deep, deep in there. Oh, I know. I got in there. I think most of mine are in there. So, uh, you know, But anyways, uh, I believe it was when Mark and Sean were talking about uh, Fargo, the new season. Um, I haven't watched, I watched the first episode and I was one of those people where I was kind of like the drop off was like, eh, and I was like, uh, so I, I've got them on the DVR and I have to watch them. But um, one of the things I picked out was essentially Mark was talking about how um, you're taking the world of the Coen brothers and you're using that as your style guide. And I thought that was really a, a good notion of how, yeah, totally. Like these showrunners, like they're taking an, an existing property and they have to make something that exists in that world, in that box. So um, I thought that was really cool because, I mean, there's so many times where in our scene and the poster scene or in the design scene where you get the lucky opportunity of working in an IP and you have to follow those guidelines. Mickey Mouse has to look a certain way. 
Captain America shield has to have, you know, a certain sheen to it. Like there's always some sort of style guy when you're working with intellectual property. And I thought that was a really good, uh, you know, uh, thing to, to pick up on, which is, yeah, it, that show succeeded because it was able to mimic the look and feel of the movie so well and get the, and nail the characters. So I just thought it was something, uh, you know, really interesting and you know, something we should look forward to. Hopefully if we get lucky enough to work in some of those sandboxes. Uh, Britta, have you, have you ever watched Fargo or season three of Fargo? I have not. No, I haven't gotten into that one yet. It is pretty awesome. And I will so, say, yeah, there's, a lot with the Sean Ward episodes, it's a lot of uh, catching up, and a lot of the shows that they watch are not the shows that I watch. <laughs> so sometimes I have to skip ahead a little bit. <laughs> That's cool. You're allowed. That's why that button is right there on the podcast to just skip, skip. It's cool. It's all right. Doesn't mean you don't love the show. You just there's some things not for you. That's cool. Season three, Tony. I will say I had to kind of force myself a little bit, and I know Mark said he dug it. It wasn't season one or season two. It was still cool, but it was kind of rough to get through. Uh, for me, uh, on this episode at 26 minutes, uh, they start talking about how uh, you know, sometimes it's like annoying when people are looking for continuity errors. Uh, Sean was talking about the It trailer and how there were some Legos that hadn't come out when it was supposed to take place. Uh, and, and yes, that is annoying. Whoever's doing that, stop. Just stop doing that. No one cares. You're not that smart. But... Uh, one of the things that made me think about is uh, what I kind of call like a uh, consumer funnel. So when I'm writing things, when I'm making ads for things, I'm trying to hit three different demographics. And I think that this these type of people who are looking for continuity errors is a good example of that. So uh, there's somebody who doesn't know anything about what you're talking about. So you're just trying to appeal to like these general people. Maybe they've using adventures in design as an example. Maybe they've never heard it. You have to kind of give them a little bit of like, hey, this is what the show is and this is what it's about. Then there are people who are very familiar with it, uh, but they're just not crazy in depth about it. So, like for example, I know a lot about Game of Thrones. So when Mark was recapping it that first time, I was like, no, you have this so wrong. And I was very happy Sean was there. Uh, I know a decent amount about friends. I know Ross and Rachel get together. I know that Joey loves food and he doesn't share it. But if you wanna put me on a friend's trivia game show, I'm not gonna get that. And then lastly, I know nothing about RuPaul's Drag Race at all. And this type of thing just works within one specific area. So for Adventures in Design, there are people who know a lot about it, maybe the three of us. Um, then there are people who kind of know a little bit about it and there are people who know nothing. And no matter what you're doing, you got to appeal to these three types of people. Uh, so most of what you write is general. Then you get a little more specific and then you put in like one sort of nod to the people that are in you you know, for the whole thing. that They're like, oh, he's appealing to me as well. Uh, I know it's a little bit of a stretch off continuity errors, but again, the continuity error people, those are the people who are really, really into shit, and you need to kind of give them a little bit too. Fuck, that was rambling. That was officially <laughs> rambling. No, I do. I do think I, that there is a point to that. And like, uh, but I, I think it's okay to think those things. Like, I feel like a part of that is also a designer mind. Um, when you can pick out those things, I think that is healthy. However, vocally just saying like, that Lego was from 2000, not from the 70s is just fucking ridiculous. Yeah, we don't, we don't need you, whoever you are person. We don't need you. Please make yourself a sandwich and get offline. Thank you. Um, sweet. So um, let's move on. AID 627. This is an episode with Paul Frank. It was fantastic. This guy has an incredible perspective on life. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows who Paul Frank is. I will say this. It reminded me a lot of William Stout in terms of the type of person he is. So if you're a Circle of Trust member, go check out that William Stout episode if you like how this Paul Frank one went. Uh, so let's start out. Tony, uh, what would you grab for this one? Yeah, mine was at the uh, one hour, 17 minute, and 38 second mark. And essentially, it's uh, all talking about how you have to do what you think you should and listen to that voice. And you don't have to be the world's best artist in order to be an artist. I mean, it's it's all about learning. It's all about getting to the point where you're comfortable and you're putting stuff out in the world and people are digging it. And that's all there is to it. And, you know, I think he, he brings up the uh, having to draw the fruit in the bowl 
And it's like, it doesn't have to, like, that's not the end goal. Like, it doesn't always have to be about nailing that perfect perspective or whatever. Like, it's a constant evolving and changing thing. So I think the other thing he mentions is uh, saying you can't is the worst thing you can possibly do. So uh, personally, I had it in my head for years and years where I was just like, I can't do this stuff. I was content to be a collector and just, you know, admire the stuff. But, you know, I, I was like afraid to pick up my pencil and be like, oh, yeah, I can do this. I mean, I can kind of draw a little bit but because I knew where the bar is. But uh, it's, it's, it's very important. And Paul seemed like a super chill, cool guy. Um, so it was really cool to hear from him um, that he's in that kind of mindset. And that's the way you got to look at things. 100%. His, his mindset is really like what's shown out to me in all this. And you're right. Like, that's how he looks at it. It's like, hey, like, I'm still going to handle it. And people ended up really liking it. And that guy made plenty of money off of a monkey and a giraffe. And it's awesome. Uh, Britta, what about you? What'd you get from this episode? Uh, I really enjoyed this episode a lot. Um, I thought that it was interesting how they talked a lot about nostalgia. And for me personally, since I'm like probably on the younger range of the listeners of the podcast, uh, Paul Frank was like something that I thought was like important to me when I was a kid that I had that nostalgia to that because I, I was probably like 10 or 11 when that brand started becoming like big and I thought that like I had the t-shirts I had like the purses and stuff like that mm-hmm. and um I just thought that it was really cool to kind of see a different perspective perspective about it and Paul Frank was just like such a cool dude he just seemed like he was just willing to hang and um the one uh, chicken nugget that I got out of uh, this one was at the minute and 24 mark which was the just um, right off the top, huh? Yeah. So well, like, like, this like the best episode ever. Well, uh, the twenty, the twenty-four minute mark where they go, oh. they they're talking about um, nostalgia, and I just thought that that was interesting because it was the playback of what they thought nostalgia was. But for me, like Paul Frank's art, like his artwork was nostalgic for me, and um, just kind of like the chicken before the egg when they were talking about that and how they, when they were kids, they were talking about how there's a difference between the Hot Wheels and the ma- the Matchbox cars, oh, and yeah. how the, the, it, the, des- the appreciation and the design is in the details. And I think that's why like designers get that, that mindset. And I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, when he was just talking about like the importance of the item itself and like, instead of just having that car with the one piece actually having like a door that opens and how that that's what sticks with you a little more right and like those are the the little things that might not seem important in production but stay with someone 15 20 30 years later exactly yeah yeah that was good uh for me uh at 54 minutes uh mark starts asking paul hey like did, did it suck to legally like lose your name and like, you know, you're so much into this world and then business kind of rears its ugly head and, and takes things away from you. And his, his response was like, but I got to do all this great stuff. You know, like he talked about, it, I was like, but I got a bendy toy and Mark asked him, so did you go to McDonald's and buy it? You know, almost like, didn't that suck? And that didn't even phase him. He just said, yeah, I went to a few McDonald's and I bought a few of those toys and if I can, for me, learning anything from that episode is taking away that mindset. It's taking away that like, yeah, maybe some shit things happen to me, but look at what I got to do. Look what I got to put out into the world and be a part of the thing that I've always wanted to be. I thought that was so cool that like, if someone told me, hey, you can't use your name anymore to make art legally for 10 years, I would probably be a little bummed for quite a while. I used to work at a skate shop for six years Things didn't work out the way I wanted to, and I left. And I was a little baby about it for a while, for sure. I was like, man, it sucks. I don't get to do this anymore. And hearing Paul Frank talk about that stuff reminded me, like, but I got to make four different skateboard graphics. I made all these different, all the things I did get to do, I totally forgot about that. And I was just being a little whiny boy thinking about the things I didn't get to do anymore. So thank you, Paul Frank, who will never watch this. Thank you for giving us that perspective and reminding me specifically and hopefully a few other people about what's really important in doing design. 
Thank you for that. I'm the only one who sucks at life and gets sad. That's cool, guys. <laughs> cool. That's all you. Yeah, like, oh man, just hearing him talk was such an awesome episode. Really, I think it was. I mean, this next one we're about to get into is also pretty solid. Uh, but yeah, just hearing his perspective was awesome on so many things. To just be you want to like to continue the conversation, and Mark was just like, "Oh no, like I know." <laughs> I <never. laughs> I was like, so we'll wrap this up. He's like, "You have a few more minutes." <laughs> yeah, it's like, dude, we'll do. We really will do a four-hour episode if you want. It's totally fine. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. The next one is AID six twenty-eight. This was Redneck Wisdom with Gerald Tidwell. I, much like Paul Frank, am very excited that Gerald Tidwell is back. Uh, he has, he's another person with an incredible perspective on a lot of things. I think that's why it's always called Redneck Wisdom. Uh, Tony, what'd you find for this episode? Yeah, mine was at the 19-minute uh, mark. Uh, Gerald starts talking about how sometimes your dreams change, and when they do, you have to be willing to kind of sacrifice whatever it is to, to get there. Um, I mean, he talks about how he's constantly having uh, new ideas and essentially he was saying how he had all this money saved up and everything was good no you know, no debt no nothing and then he just had this idea in the stream and he went for it and now he's you know racked in debt and you know hopefully he finds a way out of it but he's just like hey man like at least i'm doing it it's just something i had to do and i think a lot of us need to uh keep that in mind like it, it's worth fighting for right like there's uh even though it sucks sometimes and you're tired and you don't have the money and all you want to do is just, you know, chill out. It's like sometimes you have to kind of uh, sacrifice a little bit to get to where you need to go. Yeah, he definitely didn't have like a million dollars laying around to buy these commercial buildings, but he figured out a way to do it and started to make that happen. And he'd never done those sorts of things before. I guarantee he'd never gone down that road. And now he could probably tell you a lot about zoning laws. You just get in there. The information's out there, and you figure it out, and you put things together, and it starts to happen. Yeah, it, it, uh, I agree. It was cool to hear him be like, sometimes you got to shift gears. And somebody who was so proud about not having any debt, about the freedom that that gave him, and he's literally just walking into the lion's den of stuff he is very much adverse against to make a dream happen. It's awesome. Yeah, I feel like I can listen to him like talk all day long. <laughs> Um, yeah, the same. That, that's the same mark that I had noted of the 19 minutes um, about where he was talking about all that stuff. And I just thought that uh, all that he just always that type of guy who's just like, "Fuck you! You tell me not to do it. I'm going to do it." And I love that mentality about him. And he always gives that vibe off. <laughs> yeah. um, but also, I think he just had his baby, his baby this weekend too. So yeah, yeah, I think congratulations that night. on that. Last night. All right. Awesome. That's great. Yeah, it's cool. I think that'll – I think Mark was right when he was asking him, do you think this will change your artwork? I very much think there's going to be some cuter, cuddlier things coming out of Gerald for the next little bit. Most definitely, uh, yeah. I believe that too. For me, at, uh, at 51 minutes, uh, that's when – and this is a similar vibe uh, where Gerald's talking about how done is better than perfect. It kind of explains what that means. Uh, and the same thing you mentioned earlier, like you have to make adjustments. Uh, but what are you saying is like, just start out and make something because you can always add to it. You can subtract from it, but you have something to work with. And if you're just in your head, and I think for creatives particularly, we can always imagine the end goal. And so when you start to just maybe make your first couple pencil scratches or whatever you're about to take over, you get scared because you're like, oh shit, I'm at the beginning and I don't think I'm going to make it to the end. I shouldn't do this at all. And for him, saying done is better than perfect is like, yeah, I'll. it's enough. I've done enough things that it's there. And he also kind of expands on how the fact that like a lot of times the initial idea you have in your head isn't the way that it ends up, which happens to me all the time. You know, where you're like, oh, I'll make that. Like for me, like I'm working on some branding right now and I'm, I think, okay, I'll do this, this, and this. And then you get in there, you start working with the pieces and what ends up is totally different from what you started with. But you're looking at that like I fucking nailed it. You know, you're so excited by it, and it wasn't your idea in the first place. And that was a huge moment for me in that done is better than perfect speech because I'd never realized that that is a concept, that sometimes you just have to sit down and start moving things around, and eventually you'll end up at perfect. It just wasn't the one you knew you wanted. 
nobody's perfect, David. I think I did need to hear that. That's what I was really pushing <laughs> for at the end of the day. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was. Um, this was another solid episode. If you're if you only have a certain amount of time this week, Paul Frank, Redneck Wisdom. Yeah, one hundred percent. The whole thing. This show's about point out the one best chicken nugget, and I think you guys will agree that those two episodes, it was really hard to pull out the one thing you wanted to talk about. Yeah, the, it's the both of those those last two are definitely both listening to all the way through. Yeah. Solid um, content. And now on to the last episode of the week. Uh, we had the Logo Show with Billy Bauman and Dan Stiles. Uh, for this Logo Show, they looked at a lot of different coffee shops, uh, Dan pulled out a lot of different things from Portland. A few listeners added in some logos. And they're about to do that all with beer. So if there are certain craft beers, different logos like that, send those in to Mark. He'll take a look at them, decide what he wants to include. And your name will be on a slide that goes up on our website. And you will feel so proud that you contributed. Uh, Britta, we'll start out with you on this one. What did you, you find for this one? Um, right when they just go into the nitty gritty at the 30 minute mark where they start talking actual design. <laughs> Uh, of the logos and I just just in general not any particular one but throughout that whole section where they just kind of break down each slide that they go through and why those specific logos don't work it's um, sometimes I think like you need the Sean Mort episodes to keep you up to date on like what's happening in the news and what's going on like uh, in TV shows but it's always refreshing to just come back to uh, the design part of the yeah. show. That third word in the podcast, adventures in, oh yeah, sometimes we talk about that too. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like getting, listening to Dan and Billy kind of go back and forth about like what stuff uh, works and what doesn't. It's kind of interesting to see like what their perspective and what their, what their mindset of like what the good design is, so. Yeah. Uh, Dan in particular has such an incredible perspective on logos and he can just look at things and knock some shit out really quick and be like, this is wrong. This is right. And uh, yeah, hearing from their perspective, obviously at the end of the day with logos, there's no right and wrong answer. We don't always see it in context. We don't know where it hangs, how it looks in the physical space, but you just know when shit is shit and uh, hearing them call different things out. Yeah. It's, it's one of my favorite shows that we do just because it's very specific that they're breaking into certain things or when they're talking about like matching line weights, there are huge things that like maybe you do it when you're making logos and you're like, fuck yeah, I already knew that one. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, Tony, what about you? What'd you find for this one? Yeah. Uh, mine was pretty much at the beginning. Uh, but Dan is talking at the uh, minute and 48 second mark about how your average working stiff does not want the Saul Bass inspired uh, graphics because it's, just, it's just going to go over their heads. So, you know, uh, obviously they're kind of disconnected. I think uh, he's uh, mentioning how, you know, all of, our, all, of, all of the creatives essentially have an idea of where things should be, what looks good, what doesn't look good, but not everybody's going to get it. But I think Billy brought up a good point too, which is that I think consumers are starting to get some of these trends. Um, he brought up Target, but uh, Dan is saying, but yeah, but these are things that I think they're, they're talking about beer at this point in the beginning of the episode, yeah. um, natural light or whatever. Um, but he's like, no, these are the people that shop at Walmart that just want the cheap beer. Like, it's not about, oh, hey, this is a cool package design. It's about what's cheap, what can I afford? And that's all. That's the only thought that goes into it. So I do think there is um, a certain level of pleasing everybody. And I think we talked about this earlier in this episode, which is that you have to keep in mind that there's uh, a different design for each end of the spectrum. So um, not everybody is going to want that tall pass design, but I do. I know I, I love that stuff. So it's really important. You got to keep everybody in mind and try to hone in on something that you, you can uh, think that people will all agree on. Yeah, we, we doubled up on this one. I pulled out the exact same time and the exact same thing of like, I mean, I laugh when Dan was like, it's kind of like we're fluffing each other because it yeah. is very, it's very easy to just get involved in this world. Like if this is what you want to do, you should be consuming that all the time. But you do need to kind of come up for air every once in a while and remind yourself that most people don't even know who the fuck Saul Bass is, let alone the visual style that that means, you know, like 
we can say to each other, oh yeah, that's very Saul Bass. But those are two deep cuts already into our world of not even saying like, oh, he has like minimalist Swiss design. We're not even being normal at that. Who are you talking about? Who is yeah, exactly. Saul Bass? <laughs> it's already fishing. lost some people. Um, but I do think, and Mark kind of mentioned, he's like, oh, you let me get in there and I can, I can increase sales. And to me, that was the big takeaway in that talk is, uh, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to communicate things and we're trying to make people want to buy this. So even if people don't care about the type of design, you're still trying to say something to them. You're trying to make them choose that product and just being aware of the conversations they have in their heads, the way that things communicate to them that's what's really important there and there's still a job to be done right and that's kind of what billy was stepping in and being like well i think people are a little smarter um but you just need to understand that visual language and see where they're at and that's why you know when we're doing research on the internet you're looking things up it's important to also go where you know that product might end up and take a look at things what if you have this great idea for a design uh for some sort of like organic spinach and you think great i'll put it in green packaging if you go look at the grocery store you're gonna just blend in with every other bag of spinach. I don't know why I picked spinach, but I'm fucking sticking with it. Uh, so when you when you think about design in that matter, you can be, well, why don't I make it yellow? That'll stand out. You're not saying anything about the quality of the product, but you are communicating to a customer of being like, this bag looks a little different. And bare minimum, they'll read like, did that fucking say spinach? Because it's in a yellow bag and all the other spinach is in a green bag. That's that like end point of sale situation that you, is at the end of the day the most important because that's where you're trying to communicate. That's where you're trying to get all the shit done and out. Agreed. That was beautiful. Thank you. This is a rough <laughs> morning for me. It really is. I appreciate everyone that listened to me when try I to get coherent thoughts out. Went on a rant about spinach. Like, <laughs> this is David running on all silly. <laughs> Very much so, all cylinders. Um, so that's the week. That's Adventures in Design. It was another fantastic one. Um, thank you for watching, everybody out there. It's another episode of Full Tray. Uh, Britta, thank you for coming back. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Of course, of course, it's our pleasure. Uh, do you have anything? Uh, where should I know people know because they've met you before? But where should they find you on the World Wide Web? Uh, you can find me at outletepoch.com. Or my all my handles on the World Wide Web are at Outlet Epoch. E P O C H for people who don't know how the fuck to spell Epoch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tony, uh, people also know who you are, but where would you like them to find you on the World Wide Web? As always, I can be found on Instagram at Outside Sources or Big Cartel Outside Sources. Awesome. Um, I know I just sound like a really long fucking commercial for Adventures in Design, but that's where I work. That's how I'd like to make my living. So don't look up anything about me. Just go to AID podcast on all the social media. You can go to adventures and dot design to hear some of this stuff. Uh, again, there's going to be a playlist, I think, uh, right here in a little bit. And that'll have all these episodes we talked about that we pushed over to YouTube. Uh, if you want to leave a comment on this video below of different timestamps that you have for episodes, that'd be fantastic. When people log in, they'll see these things and they'll think, wow, like I should listen to all these moments. <clears throat> oh shit and then i almost <laughs> choked on whatever's in my throat and died uh you can subscribe to our channel but you know this happens every sunday no big deal uh have a good one we'll see you guys next sunday thanks for coming by <laughs>